Hey yo, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. Today we're looking at uh, one of the Vintage Line vehicles, as a matter of fact. Uh, today we've got the Ninja Force Ninja Lightning Cycle. This thing came out in 1992, if I remember correctly, and was part of the Ninja Force line here. They've got some cool artwork on the front here, uh, showing the Ninja Cycle itself, along with the uh, Storm Shadow figure from that, sorry, the Snake Eyes figure from that era. Uh, some fairly interesting packaging, nothing too special. This is about the time where they started getting into the going a little bit too far with things kind of realm. Um, many people consider this year to be kind of where things started dropping off pretty heavily. Uh, but still, we've got this cool looking cycle to look at. Top of the box is uh, kind of the traditional thing that we're used to. We see the uh, flag points here. This thing was worth two flag points. Flip it around to the uh, side here. Uh, we've got the original Toys R Us sticker on here. Looks like it had a price tag of $5.99 back in the day. Here we have the back of the box showing the actual cycle itself. Looks a little bit less cool, but still interesting. And then the side shows pretty much the same as the other side here. Uh, same thing for the bottom. Nothing really special about that, but uh, still, it kind of looks pretty cool and uh, it's interesting enough in its own right. So uh, let's just go ahead and unbox this thing and see what it is actually all about here. So this particular one uh, does not have any actual tape or anything on it. This is all glued back in the day. So we're just going to stick our finger now under here and uh, pop that glue open. We've got the blueprints here, which were slightly caught up under the uh, box itself, so it's curling a little bit, but that's all right. And there we go, that's everything. So all this stuff comes on these cool trees, so we get to actually put something together. And we have an awesome insert here. Looks like it's uh, the Battle Corpse kind of era with the Ninja Force. I may zoom out so you can see a bigger picture of this. But, uh, we've got some cool stuff going on in this thing here. So here's all the uh, Battle Corps figures, some of the accessories. There's a uh, Fort America. Ninja Force up here on the side. We've got some of the Star Brigade stuff before they actually announced all of them. Some more cool vehicles going on here. The uh, Shark BC-1, which was, I think, later changed to be uh, Battle Corps 2000 or something like that. The cool armor bot thing, the G.I. Joe headquarters from 1992. Uh, beyond that, we've got the, the cool Mega Marine stuff going on over here. And some of the Hall of Fame 12 inch figures. Flip this thing over on the back and we've got a really cool looking mappy thing here with uh, some of the other G.I. Joe licensed products. Got a kite and uh, some boots and a sleeping bag and a bicycle and some frisbees and a yo-yo <laughs> and some watches and the uh, inner tube looking thing and some uh, scuba gear. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Then over on the side, we've got the uh, G.I. Joe Fan Club special insert here. Haven't seen that particular set in a long time. And then G.I. Joe the comic book. So that's actually a very cool uh, insert here. It's, uh, you can hear it crunching a little bit. That's pretty old and not quite the same high quality paper we're used to with some of the original inserts, but that's still pretty cool. So we got that. We got the instructions here. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot to the assembly process. 
and the blueprints and sticker placements. So, cool. So that's everything that came in the box here. Uh, we will go ahead and zoom in here and uh, pull all the pieces out of this thing and then start doing the assembly process. So stick with us. So everything comes in this one single bag here. Kind of cool looking. Other than that, really not a whole lot going on here. They got some sort of a uh, weird stickery thing here on the side here. But uh, anyways, let's open this thing up. We've got missiles and uh, some kind of peg thing and a hubcap looking thing or something. <laughs> some cool looking stickers we'll get a scan of that here in a little while we got the missile launching sidecar We've got the main body of the ninja cycle, which actually looks really awesome, to be honest with you. That's kind of cool. We've got the uh, two rubber tires. Actual rubber on these things. That's pretty awesome. And then the wheels, and uh, that's pretty much it. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm just going to go ahead and pop all of these uh, little pieces off the little trees and then we'll actually start the assembly process. So um, yeah, a little nostalgia coming back to us here. Pretty cool. And I figure I'll go ahead and uh, pop these off these trees here on camera instead of off camera just uh, because we're trying to kind of recreate this whole feeling of uh, opening up a vintage piece and going through the entire process here so you can kind of share that experience so that's what we're going to do here so uh this is going to be kind of boring for some of us i know but uh still so these things pop off pretty easily actually So there we go. That's uh, all the little tire pieces anyways. Uh, one thing I'll note here just uh, for any of y'all out there that wonder. Uh, sometimes on these trees you'll get some little burrs on the plastic. Um, if that does happen, and it's not really the case here on any of these too badly. Uh, but what I'll sometimes do is take like an X-Acto knife and just uh, lightly scrape that to get that off there so it's no longer a burr and it's nice and smooth for you so uh just a little thing i like to do um if it's really bad you may also want to get a little bit of real fine grit sandpaper and apply to it uh, in this case we don't really have to worry too much about that but uh, just a little tip there for you we've got the second tree here so let's go ahead and pop these little pieces off here Some of these things will spin around so it makes it a little easier for them to come off. Maybe. There we go. Little spoky thing. And it looks like the uh, little small wheel for the sidecar. And two of these little missiles. And they come off really easily, so that's that's pretty nice. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and check these to see how bad these burrs are. The harder these things are to come off, uh, the more likely you are to have a little bit of a plastic burr. So we'll just uh, kind of shave that off real quick. You don't want to take too much off because it does, as you can see, there's a slight change in the plastic there. But it's not too bad. 
I'd rather have a little bit of discoloration than uh, an icky burr. Don't want to get your finger caught on anything, do you? And the wheel's got a little bit here. And I usually do this on both sides, so one way and then the other way just to make sure you get it all down pretty good. And that one's not bad at all, so. And then this little piece here is not really even enough to worry with. So yeah, our final tree is just the uh, actual rubber wheels. So we're just going to twist these things till they come off like so. And so. You can see the detail work on this if I can get the light right here. So they've got some uh, numbers here on the uh, actual tire itself. But uh, J041855F. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, the last of the accessory tree stuff to look at. So uh, let's go on to the assembly process. Step one, wheel assembly. Fit black treads onto green wheels as shown. Note, it may be necessary to trim excess bumps left by the runner frame from both black tires so treads have a smooth surface. So, they're basically telling you the same thing that I told you earlier, so. <laughs> cool. Uh, anyways, we're going to grab these uh, tires here. And uh, just uh, something I will point out. So, we uh, showed you earlier that there are some... Uh, markings on the actual tire itself so you do want to kind of orient those the right way so that that's going to be on the outside of your tires and the way this thing will put together itself at some point is uh, this one that has the long bar on it will fit into the one that has the peg hole <laughs> like this and so you'll want the tires the uh, the numbers on the tires to go to the outsides so just Keep that in mind when you're orienting these things. But essentially you just uh, flip the tire over into it and it'll fit into this little groove. So the tire itself has this little nice little groove here in the side, uh, which this little raised piece fits into. So just kind of slide that into place and uh, kind of wiggle it around till it kind of fits in there correctly. And uh, there you go, there's uh, one tire. Same thing for the other tire, just make sure that the peg hole is on the back side, the side facing away from the numbers on your tire. And these things pop off pretty easily if uh, you do put it on backwards or whatever, you can always take it off and put it on again. So there you go. Wheel assembly. Step two, wheel assembly continued. Press purple gear onto green wheel axle. Fitting tabs into gear into grooves and wheel is shown. Press other wheel onto axle. So we have our nice little uh, purple maroon, I guess is what I would call it. Not necessarily purple, but uh, this thing right here fits onto the wheel that has the big axle coming out of it. And you want the little tabs facing towards the actual hubcap looking piece here. So you just pop that in place, snap it down in there, and then line these uh, little tabs up with the little tab holes. And just uh, press until it snaps. Then take your other wheel and line up the hole here with the tab there. And just press it into place. And snap. There we go. All good to go. Step three, wheel assembly continued. Snap green tabs on rear wheels into slots inside rear axle support as shown. Seems fairly straightforward. So we've got the actual uh, body here of the cycle. The rear is the piece that has this uh, cool pull tab ripcord looking thing. Uh, it's on this kind of weird spring neck mechanism in here somehow. So 
Don't know how that works because it was put together for us, but uh, anyways, our wheel assembly that we put together earlier, just flip this thing upside down and find these two uh, wheelie looking things. <laughs> and you'll notice inside of here, you've got a little bit of a groove and then a little hole right there, notch, whatever you want to call it. So we're just going to take our wheels and basically line it up with that and uh, press it down until it hits into that little groove right there. So, And it looks like you probably just have to do one and then the other one, at least on mine, because they're not exactly evenly spaced. So that's all right. So find the one, snap it into place like so, line your groove up on the second one, and just press down until it snaps in place. Then as you pull this thing here, those tires spin. That's pretty awesome. That actually works remarkably well. So that's cool. Step four, front wheel assembly. Press green front wheel halves together. Snap green tabs on sides of front wheel into slots inside front axle support as shown. So we have our two green front wheels. Uh, they are kind of put together very similar to those rear wheels. Uh, you've got one that's got the actual uh, axle on it and one that just has the, the basically the uh, tab hole for it. So you just line those two up and snap it in place. And if you'll note, there is also a slight groove on alternating sides of these things so they'll fit in together and make one nice smooth little section so no snap on this one unfortunately but uh, there we go we got them together anyhow looks pretty good then we just take that front wheel and uh, essentially do the same thing we did for the back wheels except on the front so same thing mechanically kind of works here on the front, you've got some grooves here and then a uh, peg hole on both sides. So you just line that up, press in on it, and it just broke. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> that sucks. That's kind of the way it would go. So uh, I'm going to have to go get some super glue and fix that. So when you're doing this yourself, be careful because this uh, plastic is brittle. But uh, yeah, that just happened. But it's still kind of cool looking. So if it wasn't broken, it would look like this. So I'm going to go see if I can find some glue and uh, fix that. And we will be back in just a few moments. Okay, I uh, found myself some super glue here, Loctite super glue, and we're going to go ahead and see if we can't uh, fix this little snafu that I made. So let's uh, just go ahead and try this and see what happens here. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a little bit of super glue and uh, put it on this edge here. Don't want too much so it runs, but enough so that it holds. And we'll just uh, kind of stick it back in place here and uh, see if we can hold it in place long enough for it to bond. It usually takes about 10 seconds or so, but uh, we'll see here. Two, three, four five six seven eight nine ten and it didn't hold so try a little bit more here it uh sucks when something like this happens but uh you just kind of roll with it and uh I'm sure this is probably the most thrilling thing y'all have ever seen. Uh, 
And I'm not really getting a good seal on this thing. You can see it moving around and uh, bubbling here. So, uh, I don't know, this uh, super glue may not hold for this particular project. And I don't think it's going to. If it doesn't, that's okay. We'll uh, edit this part out. <clears throat> Yeah, this really isn't working at all. Let me try some holding music here <clears throat> when we edit this thing together. It's starting to get tacky a little bit. There we go. All right, I think it bonded that time, so uh, we should be good now. I'm going to let this thing sit for about 10 minutes and uh, check it and see what it looks like. So, uh, yeah, that's the one thing about super glue is it may take a little while to get uh, a good bond started, uh, but once it actually locks in, you're pretty much good to go. Then just uh, let it cure for whatever it says on the back of it, and this one says... And doesn't say so. <laughs> it does tell me to uh, avoid eye contact, and uh, if that does happen, to flush it for 15 minutes with water. So, anyways, we'll check back in here in about 15, 20 minutes. So we let this sit overnight this time, and uh, the glue seems to have held good enough. <laughs> so we're going to try this again here. Um, Again, this kind of thing just happens every once in a while, so nothing to worry about. So, our wheel, line it up with the two grooves, and let's try to do this without breaking things this time. I'm not going to guarantee you anything. We may break the other side this time, but uh, should just uh, slide it in place. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> The other piece broke too. <clears throat> so we're going to try to super glue that on as well. And uh, I think I will stick the wheel inside of here and glue it on this time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
But yeah, <laughs> this kind of thing happens. So let's try to uh, glue this one back in place here. Oh, luckily I've got my glue here still from yesterday. So we're just going to try it again here and uh, see what happens. Hopefully the uh, barrel isn't clogged up yet. And let's see if we can get this in here. Something about like this. That's not making a good connection there, so uh, let's uh, try unstopping this a little bit. The trick really is just to try to get this in here so that it actually makes a good connection with the two pieces of plastic. And it shouldn't be as hard as it is. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it doesn't want to cooperate. So we're going to pop that out and uh, try to do it this way.
This just ain't working. Just not working at all for us. That might have got it right there. <clears throat> nope. Okay, we're going to try that and see, and let it sit for a little while, and uh, then we'll come back to it. <laughs> okay, so the glue should be dry by now, so I'm going to give this one more shot here, and we're going to see how this works. Um, so bear with me. If it don't work this time, I don't really know what we're going to do, but uh, let's try this again and see if we can do this without breaking things worse than we have already. Um, uh, I got a bad feeling about this, but uh, let's try it anyways. So just line these two things up and uh, this ain't gonna work, I can tell you that. <laughs> yep, see, it popped off again, so I don't know what we're gonna do here. I'll try to agree glue it here and uh, see if I can get it to hold this time and we'll be right back. Okay, so I have uh, re-glued these front spindles again and I went ahead and um, reinforced that super glue a couple of times here. So maybe this time it'll hold. I'm not really sure. Some of this glue isn't actually dried yet. So, uh... I don't know, but uh, we're going to see what happens. <laughs> so let's just do a quick test and see what happens here. Uh, I have a feeling that this is not going to work, but we are going to try it nonetheless. There really needs to be a better way. <laughs> I wonder if I can just pull this thing apart. I don't think so though. Looks to be pretty well together. So uh, anyways, let's try it and see. If it breaks, it breaks. If it don't break, it don't break. Nope, it broke. Damn. 
It just ain't wanting to work. So we're going to try this one more time gluing wise and uh, I'm going to glue it with the wheel in place and we'll see what that does for anything. But it just this thing ain't just <laughs> just doesn't want to work here. Just ain't the vehicle we need today. So <sighs> I don't know y'all got any tips out there for this kind of thing. If you do, drop some comments down below. Let us know if you've ran into a problem like this in the past. And if so, what did you do to rectify the situation? If nothing else, if this doesn't work, I'll probably go get some JB Weld. And we'll do it that way, because that stuff usually works for about anything. I can just get it to hold for a minute or so. We'll be fine. But getting it to hold for that minute or so is uh, easier said than done. It's just terrible. <laughs> That might work. We're going to let that sit for a while. And uh, we will come back and see what happens here. If the wheel turns, we're going to probably have to call that good enough. And I'll probably go ahead and uh, see if I can resubmit some of this here. Reinforce it with another dab of super glue at least on the surface here maybe that'll work <laughs> we'll uh try it again here in a little while and uh, see what happens okay so after a lot of uh aggravation the glue this time seems to have held. As you can see, the wheel is in place and it is spinning here. So uh, we're we'll gonna call that a win here. These things happen and uh, you just kind of have to roll with it. So not that big a deal, but kind of aggravating that uh, you get something out of the package and uh, it breaks on you. It's my own fault, uh, but you know, it was 1992. So what you gonna do? Step five, sidecar assembly. Snap tabs on purple sidecar wheel and the holes in green sidecar as shown. So we got the actual sidecar itself right here. Cool little buttony thing. And the actual purple wheel here that they're referencing. It's supposed to go in right here and uh, 
barring any breakage like before, just line this up and push it into place. It snapped into place and spins freely, so I think that's it for that step. Step six, sidecar assembly continued. Press green sidecar post into blue cycle holes as shown. Sidecar is designed to be taken on and off cycle. So I'll flip this over to the side here. We've got two post holes right here. The car itself, the sidecar, has two posts and it just snaps in place like so. Pretty straightforward and uh, they slide out pretty easily and back in. So and it sits there and uh, rolls. <laughs> so yeah. Step seven, missile firing and storage. Insert purple missile into sidecar barrel as shown. To fire, press purple trigger at rear of sidecar. Other missile can be stored in top of sidecar as shown. We've got our two missiles here, our sidecar. And this is pretty straightforward as well. You just uh, line this up and uh, push back on it until it snaps in place. Then to fire, there's just a button activator here on the side, or the back. Pretty good spring action there. Really good, actually. And then the secondary missile just uh, kind of fits in here at the top. And uh, that's pretty much it, so you're good to go there. Step 8, activating cycle. Pull back on purple zip cord strip at rear of cycle, then press down slightly on rear of cycle to hold cycle in place. Release zip cord and cycle. Note, for best results, use the Ninja Lightning on a hard flat surface. So, grab the back of it here, yank on it, press down to hold it in place, and then let go. <laughs> And it actually works really well, so pretty zippy too. So uh, <laughs> that is kind of cool. So now our Ninja Lightning cycle is fully assembled and uh, ready to roll. So all you really have to do now is just uh, grab your figure and uh, stick him in place. and ride so yeah this is not the uh, vintage snake eyes figure this is one of the ones from the uh, spy troops line or valor versus venom I don't really even remember now but uh, it still works pretty well for that seats pretty easily you've got a couple of handlebars there you can grab onto some uh, gear sticks anyways and it looks pretty good there so uh, you can kind of see him sitting there and zooming around and all that kind of good stuff here so uh yeah all in all it's a pretty cool little cycle um i like the design quite a bit it works well for what it is not a whole lot of special stuff going on but uh you know it works so uh, as far as our 25th anniversary collectors go we'll note here we've got our beachhead figure and this thing works really well with the, these figures as well. You can just kind of stick them in place. And uh, they're a little bit bigger than what was intended with the vintage line here. But this thing still works really well. I can't really grab the handlebars. But you can see it fits here relatively easily. And uh, shouldn't have any real problems with it. So it looks pretty stylish to be honest with you. So yeah, I kind of like this thing. A little bit more than I thought I was going to. Uh, as far as size goes, beachhead here, uh, line him up, and then we've got one about two figures long by not quite one full figure wide, so 
and then standing wise the guy stands a little bit taller than the bike so you know it's pretty cool it works pretty well the uh, paint job on this thing is a little bit garish it doesn't really work well with most of our uh, 25th anniversary line it, it really looks more like something from the one of the dreadnought lines uh, and in that case it might work really well for a dreadnought cycle so um, just something to be thinking about it's pretty cool looking and uh, yeah add a little extra paint here there and abouts and uh, you've probably got a really awesome looking cycle here so I wouldn't say that you really need to go out of your way to find this thing um, but they are pretty common and uh, they don't command a very high price so you know if you find one for a decent price pick it up it's um interesting enough in its own right just uh be mindful of the issues that i ran into and don't make the same mistakes i did and be a little bit more gentle with it and don't break the stupid things at the front here the spokes other than that i think you'll be pretty happy with this thing so That's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching. Drop some comments down below to let us know what you think about this Ninja Lightning Cycle. If you'd like to see anything in future episodes, feel free to let us know that as well. Like, subscribe, share to your heart's content. And until next time, yo Joe.